Hey, I'm Michael with 3D and I want to talk to you today about Tiger Woods injuries, what's going on in his knee and especially his Achilles. And there's a lot of talk out there about Tiger Woods, what's going on with his injuries and some of the questions being asked are, is Tiger going to make it back? Is he going to be as good as he used to be? And some are even asking the question, is Tiger done? But one thing I can't stand the thought of is a golfer to the caliber of Tiger Woods doing just traditional rehab and traditional exercises because traditional rehab is just going to do one thing, it's going to focus all of its attention right here on the Achilles. All the treatment is going to be the Achilles, all the exercise is going to be the Achilles, but that's just not enough. It's not going to answer the main question of why. Why is Tiger Woods Achilles getting chewed up? And I've listened to some of the analysis out there and they're saying it's the amount of torque that goes through his leg, the amount of torque going through his knee, and the amount of how much power Tiger gets through the swing. And if that were the case, there would be a higher attrition rate. We'd see more pros with more knee injuries, with more Achilles injuries. That's just not an adequate solution. There's something chewing his knee up and chewing his Achilles up. And traditional rehab is not going to address that. They're not going to get to the cause. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at some of the causes, potential causes of, of Tiger's injuries. And we're going to do a 3D biomechanical approach to take a look at that. Okay, so what are some of the potential causes for Tiger Woods? There's no way of knowing without taking a look at them. But I want to start at the foot. The foot is just a huge player for the biomechanics of the golf swing, what's going on at the knee and the hip. And a lot of times, the foot can hide. You may have some knee problems, some hip problems, some swing faults, and they're just looking at the knee, just looking at the hip. And the foot's just down there hiding because he's the cause of what's going on. So what are some potential causes of the foot? If you look at a, a biomechanically neutral foot, if you look at the heel compared to the rest of the leg, it should be straight, shouldn't be turned in or out, shouldn't be turned in or out. If I look at the front part of the foot compared to the back, it should be flat like this. It shouldn't be turned in or down. And a potential foot type is called a forefoot varus. And basically the forefoot, the front part of the foot, is turned up in relation to the back part. It's inverted. That's called a forefoot varus. It's like this turned up. So what happens with that? The rear foot is going to compensate for that. It turns out, it everts to get that big toe to the ground. It wants that big toe to the ground so it can load the whole foot, load the whole leg for the swing. And there's a key joint in here, the subtalar joint. And this joint is just huge for the golf swing because it's the torque converter mechanism of the lower extremity. And what I mean by that is when you've got the back swing, typically you're, you're going to turn your heel out or evert. And then on the follow through, it's going to go towards this motion or invert. So you've got this side to side motion going on. And because of the subtalar joint, that's going to take that side to side motion and it's going to convert it into rotation. So you've got internal rotation going on. And again, that's usually driven from upstairs from up at the hip, but still you've got to have that motion going on. If that's not there, if it's too much, if it's not enough, if it's altered, it's going to be a huge player into the mechanics of the golf swing. So what's going on with that forefoot bear? So let's take a look at it. Okay, I want to illustrate that with the cast of a foot. This is a cast of a normal foot, a neutral foot. If you look at the line on that heel, it's pretty straight. That's the way it should be. This is the cast of a forefoot varus foot. You look at the line on that heel, it's really turned sideways like this compared to this one. Why is that turned sideways? It's everted. If I get that straight, Look at what the forefoot's doing. See how that's turned up? So the rear foot is compensating to get that big toe to the ground. So what's that going to do to the knee? What's that going to do to the hip and to the golf swing? It can just be a huge component of what's going into the golf swing. And the main thing is, a lot of guys can compensate for that pretty well. And you don't even really need to mess with the foot. But a lot of guys can't. And if they're not compensating for it, then it's going to show up. It's going to show up in injury, it's going to show up in swing faults, it's going to show up in decreased power. And if you're overlooking that, you're missing a huge piece of the puzzle. And that potentially could be what's going on with Tiger. There's a lot of other foot deformities that could play into it. This is just an example of one. But just want to show you how that can manifest itself further up the chain. Okay, what we're going to do is take a look at Jackie's swing. And I want you to take a look at his feet in relationship to his swing. And let's go down to his heel. We're going to look at the line on his left heel compared to the line on his right heel. Can you see the difference there? See how that left heel is turned out? He'll get back to it here. Look at that. Huge difference compared to the right. 
Huge angle there. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, another potential cause to what's going on with Tiger Woods could be a leg length discrepancy. If that left leg is shorter, what he's going to do to compensate for that, he's going to toe out or externally rotate that leg. That functionally lengthens the leg. What's that going to do to the hip? That's going to tighten the hip muscles. His hip external rotators are tight. So when he comes through the, the downswing, on the downswing he's going to have increased rotational velocity on that left hip compared to the right. When he comes through the downswing and through the follow through, there's a lot of rotational velocity going on and he's not going to be able to decelerate that or control that with the hip. So what's that going to do to the Achilles? The hip is the main player, it's the main decelerator, controller of that motion. If it can't do it, somebody else is going to take up the slack and that's potentially where the Achilles could do it. It was not designed to do that. It's a small muscle group. You've got a lot of mass here, a lot of muscle here. It was designed to, to control that motion. So that could chew up the Achilles. Okay, what if his left leg is longer? How is he going to compensate for that? Typically what you do for the leg, if it's longer, is you're going to pronate more on that foot. You're going to roll in more. What does that do to the golf swing? That causes increased internal rotation going through his tibia and up his leg and into his hip and knee. So that's increased torque, that's increased force. But if his hip is tight, his hip is not going to give him that motion. It's not going to let that happen. So he's got, the leg is needing more, but the hip is not giving it to him. It's giving him less. So that can cause a potential tug of war at the knee. It can really chew the knee up. It can be problematic for the ACL, for the MCL, for the meniscus, and it can really be problematic for the Achilles because the Achilles, again, can get chewed up because of that. So what we're going to do, we're going to get Jackie on the testing matrix. And this is just a matrix I use to do uh, sport-specific movements. I do a whole comprehensive array of tests with this. But for the sake of this uh, video, I'm just going to give you two tests just to illustrate what I'm talking about. So Jackie, what I want you to do, we're going to compare right to left and want to check the internal rotation of your hip. So maybe stand on your right leg, we'll check your right leg out first. I just want you to rotate around, see how far around you can get, and then we'll do it again on the left leg. Go ahead and tap that foot down there so you can get a little marker. Okay, good. All right, let's do the other side. So this causes him to internally rotate through that hip. And, and you can see a big difference there. On that right leg, he got around to maybe, oh, 80 degrees. On the left leg, it's 60 degrees, if even that. Okay, the next thing I want you to do, we're gonna check the strength in your hip to see if you can control that motion. That was more of a range of motion. I wanna see how much strength you can have to control that. So on your right leg, you're gonna do a, a squat, but I'm gonna have you do a rotational reach with your left hand. You're gonna squat and reach around. See if you can hit somewhere in this line here, and then we'll do it on the left. It's perfect, good. So he looks pretty good, one more. He's got pretty good motion, you can get around pretty good. Okay, let's try the other side. And that one, he's having a little more difficulty. Can't get around as far, the quality of motion, you can see his knee wobbling all over, a couple more. So, Huge difference right compared to left. So what's that going to do biomechanically to the golf swing? Again, with that, we're just seeing some of the, the deficits. We're not seeing the why. Why is that happening? So he can't control that motion. He can't do that very well. And again, if, if he's got that forefoot varus, that can shut the hip down. If he's got a leg link discrepancy, that can shut the hip down. What happens if the hip is shut down? He's not going to be able to decelerate the golf swing. He's going to have decreased rotational velocity with the golf swing. It just wreaks havoc on the golf swing. So uh, traditional therapy and training is going to treat the deficits. And my job is to say, why are those deficits there? That's the crucial question to answer. Why are they there? That way we can answer and get to the causes. All right, what's some of the traditional ways of treating an Achilles problem, an Achilles injury? Here's what's going to happen. They're going to have you laying down on a table, foot up in the air. They'll get the good old TheraBand or TheraTubing out, put it around your foot. And they're going to have you do some exercises, yanking on it this way, do some stuff going sideways, try to get the heel going and the Achilles going this way. They'll do some other things where you're doing some heel raises where you're on your foot and just coming up on your heel. And my question is, what does that have to do with golf? That has nothing to do with golf. If you're just doing heel raises, 
That may strengthen the Achilles, but that is not a sport-specific exercise. If your golf coach is seeing you in your stance come up on your toes like that, he's going to say, what the heck are you doing? You're not, you don't even want to come close to that. Remember, that's just all in the sagittal plane. The golf swing is a transverse plane motion. It's a rotational motion. So that's the motion you want to train the Achilles in, is to be able to deal with these rotational forces, the torque. And if all you're doing is this kind of stuff, it's a waste of time. That's, you might as well be a dancer doing that. Can you say releves? That is not a golf-specific exercise. If all you're doing is laying down and doing exercises with your foot up in the air, that's it's a complete waste of time. It has nothing to do with golf. You want your foot on the ground. You want gravity to feed your Achilles. You want gravity to affect your hip. If everything's done laying down, it has nothing to do with golf. In fact, if that's all you're doing is those kind of exercises, here's my advice to you. You need to, you need to chuck it. Don't do those anymore. It's a waste of time. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you have to do that. If all your exercises are done on a stability ball, that may look nice, but what does the ball have to do with golf? Nothing. You want to be standing up to train the golf swing. You want to be standing up to deal with Achilles, standing up to get the hip going. That's the most functional way of treating the golf swing. And also, it's, it doesn't get to the cause. It doesn't address why. Why does a tiger still have problems? Why do things keep getting chewed up? Why does he have injuries? We need to get to the cause. He needs a 3D approach. He needs a biomechanical approach. And there's no reason why he can't get back. It's, it's a golf swing. He's not a D lineman where he's taking big hits and giving big hits. It's a golf swing. And if the biomechanics are off, then the golf swing could potentially cause problems. But if the biomechanics are addressed, then there's no reason why he can't come back. So 3D approach, that's what's going to get you going. OK, Jackie, let's get it going, man. Let's do some drives. Let's do some hits. Come on now, let's go. All right. I hate feeling like this. I'm so tired of trying to fight this. I'm asleep and all I dream of is waking to you.